Okay, Panthers, hello again, Mrs. Hawk here. I have another book that I would like to share with you today. Um, it is a book called Chrysanthemum by Kevin Henkes. If you don't know him already, he is a really fun author um, that I think you would enjoy. But I'm gonna read you this story today because it's another one of my favorite beginning of the school year books. And um, if you've been watching any of the other videos, which you're welcome to do in this list, um, I've been trying to read you some of my favorite beginning of the school year books. And I really would love for you guys to think about what do you think connects all these books together? So I know uh, one of our strategies as a reader is to make connections. And sometimes we make those connections to ourselves and sometimes we make them to other books and sometimes we make connections out to the world around us. And all of those connections help us really understand text at a better level, deeper inside our brains. Um, so some of these books you may have your own connections to. Some might help you think of another book that you've heard. And some you might really think about, wow, that's like what's happening out in the world or another story I've heard out in the world. And this will help you as a reader understand the text if you make connections. Um, I would love it if you listen to some of these books this week to see um, if you can figure out how they all connect. And if you figure that out, um, stop me when you see me in your classroom or in the hall or in the lunchroom or outside at the end of the day um, and say, Mrs. Hawk, I really think this is what connects all those books or what they have in common. I would love to hear your thinking, okay? So <clears throat> I hope you'll enjoy, excuse me, this book, Chrysanthemum. Um, and I'm gonna try to say this word a lot through the book, Chrysanthemum. So uh, I'll see how often my tongue gets tied here, but this is Chrysanthemum. The day she was born was the happiest day in her parents' lives. She's perfect, said her mother. Absolutely, said her father, and she was. She was absolutely perfect. By the way, that's how all your parents felt about you. That's how I felt about my daughters when they were born. Perfect. Her name must be everything she is, said her mother. Her name must be absolutely perfect, said her father, and it was. Chrysanthemum. Her parents named her Chrysanthemum. Do you know what a chrysanthemum is, by the way? It's a flower. So, yeah, a chrysanthemum. That's hard. I usually give kids a nickname, too. I don't even know what I would call her. Chrissy? Mom? I don't know. Chrysanthemum grew and grew and grew, and when she was old enough to appreciate it, Chrysanthemum loved her name. Maybe you love your name for a special reason too. I love my name because I'm named after um, my grandparents. She loved the way it sounded when her mother woke her up. She loved the way it sounded when her father called her for dinner. And she loved the way it sounded when she whispered it to herself in the bathroom mirror. Chrysanthemum, chrysanthemum, chrysanthemum. Chrysanthemum loved the way her name looked when it was written with ink on an envelope. She loved the way it looked when it was written with icing on her birthday cake. And she loved the way it looked when she wrote it herself with her fat orange crayon. Chrysanthemum, chrysanthemum, chrysanthemum. Chrysanthemum thought her name was absolutely perfect. And then she started school. On the first day, Chrysanthemum wore her sunniest dress and her brightest smile. She ran all the way. Hooray, said Chrysanthemum, school. I hope you guys felt that way coming back to school. But when Mrs. Chud took roll call, everyone giggled upon hearing Chrysanthemum's name. Now, I don't know if you can see it, but here's her whole class and they all have names like Dawn, Eve, Lois, Al, Les, K, Max, Sue, Bill, Pat, See, they all fit in these boxes. Here's Victoria and then Chrysanthemum. It's so long, said Joe. It scarcely fits on your name tag, said Rita pointing. I'm named after my grandmother, said Victoria. You're named after a flower. Chrysanthemum wilted. She did not think her name was absolutely perfect. She thought it was absolutely dreadful. The rest of the day was not much better. During nap time, Victoria raised her hand and informed Mrs. Chud that Chrysanthemum's name was spelled with 13 letters. That's exactly half as many letters as there are in the entire alphabet, Victoria explained. Thank you for sharing that with us, Victoria, said Mrs. Chud. Now, 
put your head down. Hmm. Victoria. I mean, 13 letters is a lot, but I don't know if she needs to say that to everybody. If I had a name like yours, I'd change it, Victoria said as the students lined up to go home. I wish I could, thought Chrysanthemum miserably. She was so excited to go to school and now she's so sad. Welcome home, said her mother. Welcome home, said her father. School is no place for me, said Chrysanthemum. My name is too long. It scarcely fits on my name tag and I'm named after a flower. Oh, pish, said her mother. Your name is beautiful and precious and priceless and fascinating and winsome, said her father. It's everything you are, said her mother. Absolutely perfect, said her father. Chrysanthemum felt much better after her favorite dinner, macaroni and cheese with ketchup, and an evening filled with hugs and kisses and parcheesi. That's funny because they're mice and they're playing parcheesi, which is a game. That night, Chrysanthemum dreamed that her name was Jane. It was an extremely pleasant dream. The next morning, Chrysanthemum wore her most comfortable jumper. She walked to school as slowly as she could. She dragged her feet in the dirt. Chrysanthemum, 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 she wrote. She even looks like a flower, said Victoria as Chrysanthemum entered the playground. Let's pick her, said Rita, pointing. Let's smell her, said Joe. Chrysanthemum wilted. She did not think her name was absolutely perfect. She thought it was absolutely dreadful. The rest of the day was not much better. During nap time, Victoria raised her hand and said, a chrysanthemum is a flower. It lives in a garden with worms and other dirty things. Thank you for sharing that with us, Victoria, said Mrs. Chud. Now put your head down. I just cannot believe your name, Victoria said as the students lined up to go home. Neither can I, thought chrysanthemum miserably. First of all, I don't connect to this because we don't get to have nap time at school, which maybe we should think about, but this, have you ever been teased for anything? Have you ever made anyone feel that way like Victoria is doing? Kind of makes you so sad. Welcome home, said her mother. Welcome home, said her father. School is no place for me, said Chrysanthemum. They said I even look like a flower. They pretended to pick me and smell me. Oh, pish, said her mother. They're just jealous and envious and begrudging and discontented and jaundiced, said her father. Who wouldn't be jealous of a name like yours, said her mother. After all, it's absolutely perfect, said her father. Chrysanthemum felt a trifle better after her favorite dessert, chocolate cake with buttercream frosting, and another evening filled with hugs and kisses and parcheesi. It always feels good to go get a hug from mom and dad, right? Had a rough day. That night, Chrysanthemum dreamed that she really was a chrysanthemum. She sprouted leaves and petals. Victoria picked her and plucked the leaves and petals one by one until there was nothing left but a scrawny stem. It was the worst nightmare of chrysanthemum's life. Look how giant Victoria is picking off her leaves. That's scary. Chrysanthemum wore her outfit with seven pockets the next morning. She loaded the pockets with her most prized possessions and her good luck charms. Chrysanthemum took the longest route possible to school. She stopped and stared at each and every flower. Chrysanthemum, 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 the flowers seemed to say. I love chrysanthemum's outfit. I love outfits with pockets. Keep all your things in it. That morning, the students were introduced to Mrs. Twinkle, the music teacher. Her voice was like something out of a dream, as was everything else about her. The students were speechless. They thought Mrs. Twinkle was an indescribable wonder. That's how you feel about all your teachers here at El Dorado, right? We do. They went out of their way to make a nice impression. Can you see Mrs. Twinkle? I mean, she looks amazing. Mrs. Twinkle led the students in scales. Then she assigned roles for the class musical. Victoria was chosen as the dainty fairy queen. Rita was chosen as the spiffy butterfly princess. 
Joe was chosen as the all-important pixie messenger, and Chrysanthemum was chosen as a daisy. That's another flower. Hmm. Chrysanthemum's a daisy, chrysanthemum's a daisy, Joe, Rita, and Victoria chanted, thinking it was wildly funny. Chrysanthemum wilted. She did not think her name was absolutely perfect. She thought it was absolutely dreadful. What's so humorous, asked Mrs. Twinkle. Chrysanthemum, was the answer. Her name is so long, said Joe. It scarcely fits on her name tag, said Rita, pointing. I'm named after my grandmother, said Victoria. She's named after a flower. <laughs> my name is long, said Mrs. Twinkle. It is, said Joe. My name would scarcely fit on a name tag, said Mrs. Twinkle. It would, said Rita, pointing. And, said Mrs. Twinkle, I'm named after a flower, too. You are, said Victoria. Yes, said Mrs. Twinkle. My name is Delphinium. Delphinium Twinkle. And if my baby is a girl, see, she's pregnant. I'm considering chrysanthemum as a name. I think it's absolutely perfect. How is that gonna feel for chrysanthemum and all the other kids? What do you think? Let's see. Chrysanthemum could scarcely believe her ears. She blushed, she beamed, she bloomed. Chrysanthemum, chrysanthemum, chrysanthemum. Joe, Rita, and Victoria looked at chrysanthemum longingly. Call me Marigold, said Joe. I'm Carnation, said Rita, pointing. My name is Lily of the Valley, said Victoria. Chrysanthemum did not think her name was absolutely perfect. She knew it. Epilogue. That comes after a story. Overall, the class musical was a huge success. Chrysanthemum was absolutely perfect as a daisy. Victoria made the only mistake. She completely forgot her lines as the dainty fairy queen. Chrysanthemum thought it was wildly funny and she giggled throughout the entire dance of the flowers. Eventually, Mrs. Twinkle gave birth to a healthy baby girl, and of course, she named her Chrysanthemum. Isn't that a great story? I hope you liked it, and I hope you find the connection between Chrysanthemum and how special you are, each and every one of you. See you soon!